Hello again from my front porch. Uh, we are on the cusp of a really significant day. See, tomorrow is election day here in the United States, which means the day after that is when the next campaign season starts. <laughs> oh, I am so over it. I am so, really, I'm so over it. And, and uh, I have seen just, oh man, there, there's just so much vitriol on social media, people saying things, and I don't mean just targeted me, I mean seeing other people, you know, sparring back and forth. And the, 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 the reality is, I don't know that anybody, I've you'd never heard of anyone whose opinion has been changed because of that kind of dialogue. Now, it's okay, you proclaim to the world, this is what I believe, this is what I think, this is how I view stuff, hey, you know, go for it. And maybe somebody reads what you post, maybe somebody hears it and they go, oh, that's an interesting perspective. Cool. I believe that could happen. I don't believe it happens most of the time. And I certainly don't believe that the individuals who are out there bad mouthing uh, people who disagree with them are doing anything to win people over. Because <laughs> because if, if I have a point of view and you have a different point of view and my and I'm telling you that, that you are a stupid, ignorant moron, uh, how can you be so gullible? As, and I've seen this targeted both ways, like even at the presidential level, you know, oh, if you vote for Harris, oh, I can't believe you'd be blah, blah, blah. Or you're going to vote for Trump. I can't believe you're so stupid. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, here's the deal. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're doing that just because you want to bellyache and just because you want to share, okay, go ahead. But if, you're in, if you actually think that you're sharing stuff with the intent of converting somebody to your train of thought, uh, the worst option for you to be influential is to insult the person you're talking to. <laughs> just, just, just a tip. <laughs> oh, but I, 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 as I said, I'm done with it. So I don't want to dwell on that. I, I mean, it, it, there is a, there is a slight connection, I suppose, between that and what I actually do want to talk about. And that is, it just makes no sense. I mean, that, 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 de I was going to say debate, but it's not really debate. It's just kind of blah. It's like uh, mental diarrhea. <laughs> that, you know, that makes no sense. It's like, okay, you've said all this stuff, but you haven't changed anybody's opinion. You, you know, and, and in fact, if you were nasty and mean about it, odds are you only reinforce their opinion. So it's counterproductive to what you're trying to do. Anyway, I don't get it. I don't understand that. Well, you know what I also don't understand are, and this big transition, big awkward shifting of a segue here because these have nothing to do with each other other than I don't understand. I <laughs> uh, just don't get it. Uh, why in the world there are production companies who will produce uh, reboots of popular TV shows or movies, but only in name only? And by that I mean, uh, using the, there there was a show on uh, not long ago called Walker, which was a reboot of the Walker Texas Rangers series that Chuck Norris had starred in. Uh, the main character's name was Cordell Walker, just like on the Chuck Norris thing. And there were other characters who had the same name, some even in the same type of role capacities. And of course, Walker was a Texas Ranger, driving a pickup and everything. Uh, and it starred Jared Padalecki, who had been Sam Winchester on Supernatural. And so, well, yeah, I wanted to watch and wanted to support him. But, oh, man, I tell you, I barely made it through the first season. It was so tough to watch. And, and the sad thing is, on its own merits as a show, it wasn't too bad. It was pretty good. But every time I was watching, whenever the, he'd be called Walker, whenever I was... All I, all I could do is compare mentally all the ways that what I was seeing was nothing like the show used to be when it was Chuck Norris. Now, you say, well, but that's the point. It was a reboot. No, but my point is, if you're going to do something where you're going to do a show that is completely different from the show that was around before, then don't call it the name of the show that was around before. Why would you why would you intentionally invite people to every single episode make this comparison between what you're offering and what they loved over here before because you are not doing anything to be the show that it was before. 
not even just not recreating it, you're not linking to it in any way. You're, you've gone completely in a whole different direction. Now, if they would have called it almost anything else, you know, John Smith, Texas Ranger, I think it actually would have been better because then it would have just been on its own, on its own merits, doing its own thing. For me, the difficulty watching it was the constant reminder that it was so different from the uh, original Walker, Texas Ranger, that it was just, I, my brain just could not, could not, embra could not embrace it. It just was not, is not going to work for me. Uh, and yeah, and then, you know, when they first announced that show, I was envisioning they were going to continue on and that Walker would be like, I don't know, I don't know if, I don't know if age wise probably could work to be his dad. Um, but you know, his nephew, for that matter, Walker could have been the, the chief, uh, the, the, the top dog at the Texas Rangers now. And, and Jared Padalecki is some other ranger who's not even named Walker, uh, but is, is a Texas Ranger who's being groomed by Walker, who's being trained and, 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 you know, shown the ropes, you know, that, I mean, that would have even worked for me, but none of that was the case. That wasn't what happened. And, and, and I didn't get it. I don't understand it. Well, now we have the same thing happen again with this Matlock series. Kathy Bates, who is a fantastic actress, uh, and I have watched one and one and a half uh, episodes of the of this new show, and it just doesn't it just doesn't capture me. And the reason it doesn't capture me, you guessed it, <laughs> is because it's nothing like the original Matlock, the Andy Griffith Matlock. Now, when they announce they're going to do this again, I'm thinking, oh, she's going to be. I don't think she could be his daughter. I don't think there's that age dynamic. Maybe I'm wrong, but I was thinking maybe like a sister, maybe she was a niece, maybe, um, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, his, his second wife, you know, I don't know. Um, but whatever the case might've been, I was expecting some connection to the original Matlock and that this is, while, while it's not, you know, rehashing his scripts, it's a continuation on of his legacy of that storyline. It's not it at all. In this new Matlock series, the old Matlock series starring Andy Griffith actually was a TV show. And this new Matlock introduces herself to people by saying, yes, my name is Matlock, like the old TV show. That's the connection. I'm like, what? Now, it's possible as, this, as the series goes on, they might you know, establish more connection. I don't know. I won't be there to see it because I... I yeah, I, it, no matter how good the show was, I cannot get beyond the fact that it is called Matlock and it's not Matlock. You know, there've been other attempts to do things like this that, that worked, but they, but they connected, you know, like Night Court uh, is, is back. And I know there's some people who don't like it that you were big fans of the original. I was a big fan of the original too. Um, but I, I liked it, the new show. Is it, I mean, Harry Stone is not there. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> deal with it. You know, uh, you, know you, you don't just grab that lightning in a bottle again. But I think that his daughter taking his bench, taking his place on that bench, that that's kind of cool. That's kind of fun. And, you know, you bring back a few people from the original series, like John Larroquette, for example, who's, who is a, basically, who's a, a regular cast member of the show. Uh, but you bring back some of those people and you give a little bit of that homey retro feel sometimes. Um, but the storylines, I mean, it, it's, yeah, I, it's totally plausible and believable to have watched the entire original Night Court series and to now watch this one. It's a good companion build on peace. It's continuing the journey. Same thing with Dallas. Uh, I enjoyed Dallas when it was on originally. And then here recently, they brought it back for three seasons uh, and they didn't call it the new Dallas. Dallas continues. It was just called Dallas because the intent was they're picking up the story with, with these characters who have now aged a couple of decades since, the, uh, since we last saw them. And, and so now we're seeing uh, some of the veteran members, Bobby and JR and Sue Ellen and folks like that, Cliff Barnes, some of those individuals, those, those older vintage folks are there. And you've got the young generation, the, the, the kids of the Ewing clan who are now grown adults and are running parts of the business. And, you know, they're emulating their, their parents. And uh, uh, now some will say, well, it, it had to end because Larry Hagman died. You can't have uh, Dallas without JR. Okay, there might be some truth to that, but, 
But there were some things going on with Bobby that I was really intrigued to want to see because, you know, Bobby was always the good guy. JR was the nasty guy and JR would do the nasty stuff sometimes that he'd do it though for a good reason. And that doesn't mean his wasn't still nasty, but sometimes the Ewings needed someone to get their hands dirty in order for them to come out okay. And JR was totally willing to always do that. Well, now JR is gone and towards the very end of this uh, resurrected Dallas, uh, after JR had passed away on the show as well, there were some questionable decisions needed made and Bobby was willing to make them. Bobby made some compromises to do that. And so you kind of started to see that now that Bobby could no longer just be the good guy because he had his brother being the bad guy, Bobby now was going to have to move a little more to the middle and straddle a bit of both. And I was really intrigued to see where that would go. But alas, the show came to an end because uh, they made some bad storyline decisions, in my opinion, uh, not the least of which was getting the Ewings involved with the Mexican drug cartels, which would have never happened. I mean, you know, even not JR at his worst and dirtiest and lowest would have never got involved with people doing drugs and things. So that, that, was, that was kind of disappointing to see that be the context that the Ewings went out on. That was, that was a bummer. But still, I enjoyed that show because it continued the original Dallas. And so when I'm watching these characters and I'm seeing them do these things and I'm hearing them talk about the, the South Fork Ranch, and it's okay because it's a continuation of the same show. And uh, so that's why things like this Walker and this Matlock, I just don't get it. I, I under, again, I understand the, the idea of we want to call it this this thing that people really loved, so that it's a hook to bring them in to see our show. But if you're gonna hook them in using that kind of a connection, then you better be offering something once they're there. Because if you hook it, like I'm case in point, if you hook them with connecting it to something they're familiar with and enjoyed, but then they get to your show and it's not even remotely <laughs> what they used to enjoy, they're not gonna stay because you did a bait and switch. Doesn't matter how good your show is on its own merits, because you lied to viewers, you at least misrepresented to viewers by connecting it to a show that you have no intention of really being connected to, your viewers aren't gonna last long. Now, again, the, the new Matlock, what I what I've seen it was it was decent. It's okay. I'm not I'm not gonna watch more of it. I, I don't feel compelled to. Uh, the, again, the, the Walker one, I only watched it for as long as I did because of Jared Padalecki, but Jared Padalecki, and I wanted to give it a chance. But uh, ultimately, I was like, I have better things to do with my time. <laughs> so, whoop, I was gone. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's <laughs> really that's the episode today. <laughs> that's, I, it just was. This is just on my mind now. You know, a good a good follow up to this episode. Uh, actually, I'll, we can just throw it in here. Uh, it's not really. I don't get it. Uh, maybe a little bit, but you know, they they keep wanting to reboot stuff that was popular that everybody loved. Wouldn't it make more sense to go back and look at TV shows and movies that were not popular, that were not well received, that bombed, and and reboot those? Take another pass at that story or concept, but maybe improve it, do it better, so that this time it's a hit. Take something that that stunk and make it smell nice now. <laughs> See, that to me would be more of a challenge. But no, they don't do that. Nobody's doing that. I I I, I don't get that either. Actually, I I actually get that better because you know the the assumption is it bombed before. Why would we want to spend a whole bunch of money potentially bombing again? Um, but you know, hey, where's your sense of confidence in your own creativity? Come on, come on, Hollywood. <laughs> uh, anyway, you, you also may have noticed a little 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 uh, whiteness here on my on my chin. I was uh, I, I I was challenged because uh, you know I, I I grew it out with the the video stuff that we did in Ohio. And then I promptly shaved it off, you know, in the first morning after I was back home. But I had somebody uh, really heavily challenging me to do no shave November. Now, 
I've never done no shave. And I've only grown a full beard one time in my life. And I had a full head of brown hair <laughs> back then. And it was a full brown beard. Uh, I was getting ready to play a character in our church Christmas play that I wanted to have mutton chops, you know, where it comes down the side and up over the mustache area, but there's nothing on the chin. Uh, and, but I didn't want to just grow mutton chops and walk around town like that. So I grew a full beard. And then the, the day of the, the first performance, I shaved out the chin part and turned it into mutton chops. Uh, but then as soon as that play was done, whoop, it, that all went back away too. But the, well, except for the mustache, because I had the mustache, that, that, that goofy mustache that I had uh, for 30 years. <laughs> um, but anyway, I was challenged to do No Shave November just to see what it looked like. And I can tell you what it's going to look like. It's going to look white and gray. It's going to make me look old. And I'm not really excited about that. Uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot. I, I'm, I've gone, uh, what, now, uh, not quite a week at this point. Um, and so I'm, I'm letting it grow. Uh, I have the ultimate veto authority. So... If I, if one day I look at myself in the mirror and I go, nope, <laughs> then it goes away. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, see if I make it all the way through to the end of November growing it. And if it looks the way I suspect it's going to look, then uh, I'll be able to book those mall gigs as Santa Claus. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I, I am going to go back. I, I'm, I'm, I got work I'm still doing here. I'll be doing it all into the evening. Yay. Um, I mean, it's important stuff. You know, it's just like sometimes it just, it's like it's just constant. It just never stops. Just keep, keep putting, but, you know, it's one of those times. Uh, back in my nice, my, my, my mostly warm house, because I did break down on November 1st, turned on my, heat for the very first time, uh, but not very high. It's still at 67 degrees. So, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, uh, if without it now, I would be a little, little extra chilly down in my office basement, uh, my basement, uh, my office down in the basement. And so, yeah, had had to do a little of that because I have to be able to feel my fingers when I type. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to let y'all go done rambled and prattled on and you know if sometimes some of you that that do watch a lot of these or or most thank you by the way um give me if, if you do that um uh you might want to go you know make an appointment with a psychiatrist if you're regularly watching but <laughs> but uh you know sometimes you might go man paul that I, and so I get feedback. So I'm, oh, that was a really good one. That was really hard. But then there are some other episodes <coughs> like this one that, that you might go, man, I am not getting that time back, am I? <laughs> no, no, you are not. <laughs> all right. With that, <laughs> I'll let you all go. And I'll see you next time if you're brave enough <laughs> from my front porch. <laughs>